And now we have the demo portion of the session today. So let's start up by booting up the network gateway. As you can see, it begins out by U-Boot running, and I'm actually going to stop the U-Boot setup so I can show you exactly what U-Boot contains. So by typing the word print env for print environment, it shows you everything that you have set up on the system. For instance, it indicates that the baud rate is 115.2k. It also set shows you your Ethernet address addresses. This is very important settings that you need to do to make sure you don't have any conflicts. So in here you'd assign your Ethernet address. You'd also assign your server IP. Now the server IP is very useful if you're doing T TFTP NFS setup. That allows you to run the network gateway across the network and use your local hard drive as the access point. So that's one of the many development ways that you can use the network gateway. Everything else in here from the Ethernet address, then you see the different boot args, which tells you how it boots up and what it's mounting, and the different standard in, standard error, standard out. So if you wanted to make any changes in your setup, this is, this is how you would do it. So U-Boot is one of the first things that you configure. The boot args and boot command is what gets passed to the Linux kernel. So let's go ahead and, and reset the system. So as you can see now, I let it boot up. As you can tell, the first LED is on. This is the power LED. So as it goes through and boots to different file systems, let's scroll up here a little bit and show you some of the things that it was doing. So up here, if we scroll up through the hyperterminal settings, you see U-Boot set up. You see the kernel starts up, starts synchronizing files, sets, sets up the IRQ does the different hash tables, does some of the mapping, defines the different the different setup. You can see the NAN connection comes into play. So it does a lot of different things as it flies through. So down here you can also see some of the other setups such as the IP tables, the network date connections, uh, any of the different daemons that you need to be running, HTTPD, things like that, and also the GPI GPIO setup for the network gateway. And we'll show you how you can use them in just a few minutes. So we've now booted to the command prompt. As you can see by looking at the the system LEDs, the second LED is on now, which indicates you're you successfully booted up. Now we are at a Linux shell. So we can type standard commands such as ls to display the contents. You can browse, you can look at the memory, what's being used by typing top so a lot of the standard commands that you would expect from a Linux distribution are included. So for instance if we go to the etc.init folder you will see all the different startup scripts. So these are all run in alphabetical order so different things like telnet, the firewall, the sound utilities, HTTPD, SSH, Samba, all of these are initialized and this is the location where you would want to add your own script files to start things at boot up. So let's, let's, let's see the web server that we have running now. So you go to your standard internet browser you type www.example.net example.net is one that's reserved uh, it doesn't have a an actual web address this is actually pointing directly to the network gateway so we could type that and immediately you're there. Shows you all the different options you have. We could also type 10.0.0.1 and it takes you to the exact same place. So that's just the same the same address. So let's let's take a look at first let's take a look at the documentation. So as we mentioned in the PowerPoint slides, you actually have all the documentation on the CD. So if we come to the network gateway user guide, say you get the quick start guide. Here it tells you the default route the default password which is root is the user and root a is the password so you'll need to remember that when you're setting up the different things like samba and ssh so here it shows all the different settings on how you can actually use the network gateway and what's set up such as usb samba ftp the different terminals and using the dynamic web page so if i go back to the main page here we'll take a look at some of the other 
features that are included. So here we have the administrative console. This tells you everything ab about your the way the router is configured. So here it tells you the different settings that are on there, mass storage device for the USB, the different firmware versions, kernel, ver kernel versions, dates. You have a lot of information. So if we look at the status, remember the default username is root and the default password is root A. So we go in here, you see the different network addresses. Here's what we have been assigned on the PC. This is the PC's local IP address and here's the external web address where the network gateway is connected to. So you see different types of connections and activity that, that go on throughout the different process. So as you wander the web and do different things, different things will set up and show up here. On the right side it also shows you your uptime and some other simple information on what you're running. You have the ability to change the password, adjust the settings. You can also configure and define what type of networks you want. You can also set up the different firewall properties. So all of these are included in the default network gateway package. If we go back to the main website, example.net, let's move to the GPIO demonstration. So here we're using a CGI script. This, this allows you, this, this shows that from the web interface, you can directly control the hardware on the board. So let's take a look. Right now, the LED is off. So do we want to turn it on? We click to turn it on. There it is. The LED turns on. So we turn the LED on. You can toggle that back and forth. And the CGI script looks at the, the value and updates the website. So here we go back and forth toggling it. Now this is very useful if you want to add different different features for your web interface so you can have remote access to it. It would be very nice to be able to access the hardware and this is exactly what we're showing here. So let's go back to example.net again and we have the the sample web tools that set up. So what I'm going to do is while that loads up I'm going to come over here and map a Samba share. So map network drive so now our question is, what, what do we need to connect to the, to the Samba setup? So let's open a new tab while, while that's loading up. We'll go back to example.net. And remember, everything to set up the system is in the user guide. So by quickly scrolling through the user guide, I can come down here and see, ah, I need to map slash slash Samba slash net disk to map that as a local drive. So I'm going to copy that and paste this in my network setup. We'll map it as Z drive. Click finish. Again, root, root A. And there we go. We have the net, the Samba share mapped as drive Z. So let's uh, let's let's take a look uh, at at what we can do. So first of all, right now it's empty. I created a little text file here. It's just a hello world. So I'll drag that and drop that on the Samba share. So now we'll take a look at that file. So we go to the SD card, slash media, slash SD card. What do we have stored in there? The hello world. So let's, uh, let's more the file and this will display it on the screen. There you go, simple hello world. So what we can also do to prove that it is two-way communication, let's, let's echo hello network gateway to a file that we will call ngw.txt. So there you go, the ls it, shows up on the screen. So if we come back to the Samba share, it shows up after refreshing it directly in the share. So we can open that up, hello world. So there you can easily communicate back and forth between the network gateway and your PC. So some of the other things you can do is you can connect via SIGWIN or a DOS prompt and you can tell net directly into the machine, 10.0.0.1. Here you have all the different commands that you would before, just like you would through the terminal. You can also do SSH from here too. It's very easy to set up and use secure copy, FCP. There's a lot of different things you can do by using the already installed tools that come with the network gateway. We'll take one last look at the Samba share and the Samba admin tools on the web 
We can define shares in the Samba setup, basic, advanced, simple shares. You can share printers, you can go through the wizard, you can look at the different status, and you can even change your password. So one last time, make sure when you do use the network gateway that you do come in and you take a look at the different tools. Everything that you need to get started is included in the wiki pages. You'll also find up-to-date wiki pages on atmel.com's website and on avrfreaks.net. A lot of users have contributed to developing the updated forums and you'll see very good information on there. Thank you again for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this inside look at the Network Gateway. For more information, feel free to visit us on the website at atmel.com. Thank you very much.